Our household can be super crazy. It can be stressful. And it looks like it's chaos, but it's so organised, it's ridiculous. So it's not just about the seizures, it's everything that goes along with it. The anxiety attacks, she can have them over a thunderstorm, wind, rain, sunlight. The seizure part for a person looking on the outside in is epilepsy, but it's such a big package that goes along with it. I'm Elena and I'm 12 years old. What sort of art have you got up? Um, I got a cow, a tiger, some fruit and a tree house. Who lives in your house with you? Um, my dad, um, Nico and Claire, my mum and me. And the dogs. We have four kids. Jacob is 27 and living in the Gold Coast. Kalel's 13, Nico is 8. Melena's 12. She's the only girl in the family. Lucky her. We live in the uh, wonderful province of Taranaki in New Plymouth. And we've been here since 2008. Um, Melena had her first seizure at seven months. She went blue and she had a full tonic-clonic, full convulsions. It was Jake that rang one-on-one -on -one because we were a bit of a train wreck, to be honest. Neither of us had any epilepsy in either side of the family. Some kids can just have the odd seizure, so that's what they put it down to. But the next day she had another two, and then the following day she had another three. <laughs> the older she got, the more types of seizures she developed. When people think of adults or children with epilepsy, they consider tonic-clonics, the full seizures, they can be quite violent. Generally, you'll have a person with epilepsy that either has the tonic-clonics or has the absent seizures. But with her, if you can start here, move across to this one, then go back, the combination is, is um, I guess, endless. She has intellectual disability as well. So she's 12 years old, but has a mind of a six-year-old. Those were for my birthday. And how old did you turn? 12. Oh. What did you find? What an egg. I found this. What is it? It's a chocolate egg. Chocolate egg? Can I eat it? melena has been diagnosed with a very rare genetic mutation um, in the KCNH5 gene, and that's what's been causing her epilepsy. She's one in eight in the world to be diagnosed and was only diagnosed last year. Yeah. Come on, Moo. We have a pretty good routine, but some mornings it can look extremely hectic. What would you like for breakfast? Uh, then we'll go and make the bed, eh? Oranges. Oranges? Oranges. Do you want a fruit salad? Yeah. Fruit salad. The key thing is setting Melena up to do something for herself. You give her one task, and normally just eating is actually a really good one, because it can take 45 minutes for her to eat a meal. OK, let's move you to the table. Look. Oh. What's going in your fruit salad? Oranges, apples, bananas and grapes. She may start something and then part way through, and she doesn't want to eat it. That's normally when Anthony comes in. <laughs> in the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> She can be up from anything from 5.30, which you know is going to be a really long day. I don't know how her day's going to go, whether she'll survive. She'll either charge through the day or she'll only get halfway through the day and she'll start going downhill. They just text me and I just pick her up, which is great. She 
he's funny sometimes. No, you're sometimes funny when I come into your room and sleep. Oh, yeah, we usually play Beyblades. If you're playing Beyblades, you've got to make sure you don't rip it so hard that it flies out the stadium and lands on you, because it does hurt. <laughs> she may not have the concept of what day it is, mm. but she knows she always has a routine. Give her something to do and then let the chaos fly. Right, there you go. This jumper causes horrendous anxiety because of the neckline. Turn. High neckline. And um, she freaks out over it cutting off any circulation. Wait. Chicken. She has found it hard to keep friends. As a kid, it's hard to make friends full stop. And if you're a child that chooses not to speak to people, obviously it's going to be even harder. For any parent, you just don't want your child to be alone. Hi, Milena. What do you think we're cooking today? Nikki came into her life only a few years ago, and what an impact very quickly she's had. Great for Milena is because she challenges her in a good way. So, guys, today we're going to make a pasta bake. When you... um. Cook a pasta bake. The good thing about this, what we're making, we're making a roux sauce. And this sauce can be used like for broccoli and cauliflower. Who's like, who's like broccoli and cauliflower cheese? Or carrot, yeah. Yeah, We both have allergies. We both have epilepsy. We always sit at the same desk group. Ever since we met and then we became friends, she's like been helping me with stuff and I've been helping her with everything. It looks great, what do we need now? Um, cheese. She really tries her best with everything that she does. Even things that create fear for her, she'll give it a go. Jerry and I determined to find something to improve Melena's quality of life. Dr. Raymond Giacomo is Melena's paediatrician. Hey, Melena. Melena. Hello. You're coming on. We're up. Good to see you. Come. And just, you could take your mask off inside. Okay. That's fine. Through the years, he's just been an amazing advocate for her. All good today? Really pushing her case through the system. What makes Malena unique is the cause of her epilepsy. They found that she had a specific genetic mutation, and that specific mutation is really rare. There's only a few children that have been described with that. So I just heard a big crash, and I knew straight away she had one of those drop seizures that, like she had last year. She's got a form of epilepsy which is quite severe. So developmentally, she's running more and more behind as compared with children of the same age. She's had every single medication that you can think of. What we're trying to arrange, the neurologist in Auckland suggested, is a VNS, that's vagal nerve stimulation, which gives you little stimulations in the brain, and it should bring the seizure activity down if it works. Thank you. Well, we've been hoping to be on the list for three years. Thanks, Raymond. Good to see you. But, yeah, there must be other people out there that need it more than Milena. G'day. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. What do you got? The chocolate croissant. And I'll grab a regular flat white as well, thanks. Yep. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. To be honest, we don't really know the real Milena. One hypothesis was that she had a lesion in her brain. Milena went to Starship Hospital and put her in an MRI. So part of the video EEG is they reduce her medication 
and we got to a point where she wasn't on any meds at all. Taking her off the meds was meant to induce the seizures so then they could pick it up in the EEG. Hi, my turn. No, my ball. Yeah. ball. So to coincide with this visit, it's Milena's sixth birthday. And for her birthday, the one the people at Ronald McDonald House, they gave us tickets to the Auckland Zoo. So we go to the zoo and she would say hello to people. She would look and point at things, which, you know, little kids that just want to see the world. You, know, you could just see that, wow, she's actually seeing the world maybe for the first time. You know? And to one moment I treasure. But then fast forward, heading back to Starship. Go up the inside side. Put your hands in lights on. She had one of the most violent seizures we'd seen ever. Uh, ambulance, please. And I thought that car seat was going to shift off the seat belt. She was, yeah, it was, it was that rough. But yeah, to have that moment, Milena to me was Milena for the first time. When Milena was younger, I used to work overseas. Be away for as long as maybe two months at a time. But as Milena's epilepsy started to evolve, it was time for me to head back home. I'm the senior pilot at base, but before then I was the base and contract manager. That was difficult to balance at times. With the epilepsy, as Milena's gone older, when she's stable and we can manage it, it's semi-normal. But there are these you know, little spikes in the timeline and that's when I thought I needed to downshift on the career path, just to be available more to support Jerry at home. And we're doing that now, which is great. It's a balance act. You've got to find, you know, what works for you as a family. Well, hi. We needed to find somebody that we could trust to wash the kids, and not just Melina. Gemma came along, and they were just instant, you know, instant best friends. What number do you reckon I should do? Uh, um, the body centre is pretty big. I've been with Melina for four years. We do dancing, colouring. She definitely likes colouring in and drawing. I think it's a smoothing activity, so she feels relaxed and safe. When you landed here, take the top card from the Kari deck. Whoa. Six. Three, four. I've noticed lately, if she's not talking to me, I know that she's having some kind of seizure activity. Sometimes she doesn't remember I've been here, but she'll remember what we've done together. See you when I get back. There were so many times where her seizures were just out of control. And so I stopped working during the days. I then took up things in the morning, teaching boot camp in the morning, teaching classes at night time. So then we had that balance. And that was also an outlet for me. Good. Reaching up. You know you want to. Reach up. Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, I teach uh, hit class. And basically for me, it's my time to escape. Somebody needs to be available. If Milena has seizures at school or she's going downhill or she's tired and she needs picking up, that's me. I never want to not be available for that, but I also need something from me, and this is why I come to teach these classes. They are like family to me. Majority of them have been with me since I started teaching. They are great because the energy is always high. Lots of laughs and I need that. Some days are rough. But to be honest, Elise turns up and we 
put some music on, we go wild and crazy, we dance it out. I can come here and I can leave everything at the door. With seizure meds, you have to wean the child onto full dose. And, you know, sometimes it might be a week, others might take a six, month. Yeah, six weeks. And then, then when they don't work, you can't just switch them off either. You need to, wean you know, off. wean off that. A good example would be when Milena was put on a new medication, which was meant to help control the seizures. But we found that it actually did the opposite. When they come back, the seizures come back, they are... Very aggressive. ...pretty horrible, yeah. yeah. You think the ones prior were bad, but they get extremely violent. Mm. She's been through around 12 different brands of epilepsy seizure medication. Most of the medication that's worked is they'll work for a certain number of months. The closest we've been to is 364 days, tonic-clonic seizure-free. We've gone to the end point there where there's really nothing else we can trial. The VNS is pretty much like a pacemaker. It will pick up a seizure and then give a shock to the brain to say, right, this is happening, you know, let's reset the brain. We're still pinning our hopes on getting Milena on the VNS device waitlist. It's the only thing that's left that we haven't given a go. Great, come through. You have to fit a criteria because if that's your last resort, you've got to make sure that it will work for them. Yeah, so we don't know much about the VNS device itself. But um, do you think it will head towards Milena coming off her medication? The short answer is no. What you want to do is reduce the number of seizures and reduce the duration of seizures. The aim was never initially to make it stop completely. Yes. Vagal nerve stimulation doesn't take the cause of the epilepsy away, it treats the epilepsy. At the moment, the seizure is pretty bad. You know, she wasn't having enough seizures, so she got declined. And then... So she was having the wrong types of seizures, yeah. I guess. And not enough. Put them into booklets. Now we have tacked everything. Not the last half. The device will be a game changer for Milena. I guess it's just another tool for us to use. This is really the only thing that practically is going to help Milena. She's very particular where she sits. This is her seat. Strangely, it's her seat for dinner. <laughs> this is her seat for breakfast. We need to eat by 6 o'clock. Um, Milena needs to have meds in her no later than 6.30. She can be a complicated child because of her understanding and the worries and stress that we would never understand that goes on in her. But she would do anything for her brothers. You can, you can use any. All right. The first one's a pink medicine. We've only brought on this year. Very short trial phase because of some quite bad um, reactions to it. And then the blue ones. Um, there's five of them. Oh, oh, Moo. No! Moo! S stop! What? You don't even know how many were in there. Oh. Yeah, you needed to stop and you needed to wait. We weren't finished, Bob. You've never done that before. So this behaviour is... <laughs> is actually seizure activity kicking in but can bring on anxiety really quickly. And the mood swing changed really fast. Never has she taken part meds before. Um, and then wanting now Anthony to stay away from her. You want to guide her, but at the same time keep an eye on her, but at the same time <laughs> keep away from her. Mm. It's a fine line. So you just have to let her do her thing. There's multiple different types of seizures that she has. She's only allowed three seizures in an hour. If she has three, she has to have emergency meds. I can't imagine what she goes through every day. What happens in her brain, what that does to her perception of the world.
How's that? <laughs> good, yeah, good. Well, I've got, got some news, but I'll get the others first. All right? Okay, yeah. Sweet as. Let's start with that. Hi. Hey, Hello. <laughs> so, Mum got an email to say that yeah. Elena is going to be put on the BNS device. It's going to happen in the next four months. Like, actually on it, on it, not like. Yes, yes and on the short one as well. We were thinking one year. Okay. The email said within the next four months she'll have the operation. Wow, See? no way. Yeah. So that went from talking about it to it not happening to, oh, uh, yeah, we're putting you on a fast track waiting list. Yep. And that's a lot to take it. Yeah. Amazing, eh? We can't get our hopes up too far because she still has that rare type of epilepsy that has no known medication that actually can help her. So we just have to hope that it just betters her life. Bye. Talk soon. Diagnosis or not, it doesn't change her. You know, um, she's a brilliant kid. <laughs> What I wish for her is to enjoy life. She's gone through all of this journey so far, 12 years of her life. So many ups and so many more downs. And the journey has been draining for the entire family. Imagine what it is like for her. Her, her brain must be everywhere 99% of the time, but she can still enjoy the simplest things. Yeah. She will be whoever she will be, just as long as she lives her best life and is given that opportunity to actually live that best life.